Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Emma Camp. Let's get into it. After former President Trump took a swing at independent challenger Robert F. Kennedy Jr., late night television had no shortage of jokes on the matter. Speaking of disappointing sons, over the weekend, Trump posted five times about RFK Jr. He wrote, why did Jr.'s family go so bonkers at the thought of him running against crooked Joe Biden because they are radical left lunatics? They can't conceive of their even more liberal brother running as anything else. MAGA 2024, don't waste your vote on Kennedy. Trump wants to position Kennedy Jr. as a left winger because he knows he might siphon off some of the anti-vaxxer vote he's expected to get. You can see the overlap here. Trump needs to <laughs> do everything he can to protect the crazy vote. I mean, uh, Jimmy Kimmel is so <laughs> full, himself, full of himself and so not funny, demonizing people for, I guess, not wanting vaccine mandates or something. Um, but Trump is right that RFK Jr. does have and has had a long history of some opinions that do align with what progressive people think and what left-leaning people think. And it is smart, in my view, for Trump or other people who don't want you to vote for RFK Jr. You know, to remind his voters that this is someone who has a long history of environmental activism, energy activism, um, for, uh, ad, uh, ad advocacy about the pharmaceutical industry that, as a result, in my view, you know, he, he's entitled to those views, but would, would grow the government and would limit people's choices on those fronts. That said, I appreciate RFK Jr. Um, for some of what he's had to say on foreign policy and some of what he's had to say, uh, while I don't agree with what he said substantively about the vaccines themselves, uh, importantly, pushing back on um, mainstream popular ideas that it should be required and all of those other COVID-related things where he eats into Trump's support because Trump is the one who locked down the country and put Dr. Fauci in charge of our lives and is vulnerable to, from conservative people on those issues. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not a huge Jimmy Kimmel fan. He is objectively the worst of the late night hosts. Please. But, I, yeah. you know, I don't think it is unfair to argue that there is sort of a conspiracy-minded voter that would be attracted to both Trump and RFK. I mean, RFK has been very well known for a very long time for straight up anti-vaccine conspiracies, not just being anti-vaccine mandates, but, you know, peddling the idea that vaccines cause autism, that drives to, uh, you know, increase access to polio vaccines, have increased polio cases. Um, things that I, I do find to be, you know, I, I don't want to frame any ideas as dangerous because I think that can lead to calls for censorship, but, you know, Vaccines are, in my opinion, basically like the best invention ever that have saved millions upon millions of human lives. All so right, I, d I do have some, I do think that RFK is being conspiratorial. Well, there and then there, there have been plenty this. of conspiracy theories that Trump but has But no one would it. call, where's, no one's calling Joe Biden conspiratorial for saying that if you get the COVID vaccine, you will not get COVID, as he did on multiple occasions. Well, I wouldn't say and that that, that was a up, conspiracy. Like that, well, I mean, it's, they're wrong. They ended up no, being wrong about wrong. that. And not just wrong. him, but major health authority figures assured us that this was the way out of the pandemic and you should get this vaccine and it'll stop you from getting COVID. And that turned out to be totally wrong. Well, I don't think Biden would say that now if you asked him. Well, yeah, he was, okay, he was wrong about it. Right, right. I, yeah. I think the sign of a conspiracy is- And he implemented when a federal, excuse me, with a you federal uh, uh, order to millions of employees that had to get it on that basis. No, I, look, I agree with you. I think the way that the U.S. government handled COVID was overbroad and, you know, cha really suppressed people's basic liberties. Um, but in terms of, of the conspiracy issue, I, I think what defines a conspiracy in many ways is when you are faced with new evidence, not changing your mind, right? Now, granted, plenty of people will change their mind without saying they were wrong because they don't have enough humility to do so, but at the very least sort of change their mind a bit. You know, I think right. with the lab leak, that's a theory, that's a good example of that. Right, they said um, that, and they said that was a conspiracy theory. Right, and, and, we, and that was a bad idea, evidence. but yeah. now, the, but you know, the, right. You know, the health authorities in this country are, I wouldn't think. I, I guess if there are voters out there who feel that, I, I think it would not be unreasonable to think that, um, that, I'm, that I'm less threatened, frankly, by RFK Jr.'s um, views about vaccines that I don't agree with and think are incorrect. But if he's leaving it up to me to decide whether to get the vaccination, that is less threatening to my liberties than a president like Joe Biden, who is willing to require it of some sectors of the economy. Now or of some sectors of, of American society. Now, the complicating factor is 
Uh, RFK Jr. obviously has been interviewed by Reason, where he was asked by our colleagues, Nick Gillespie and Zach Weissmuller, well, are you going to make it um, more difficult to get regulatory approval for vaccines or other pharmaceutical products? And you know, people can go listen to that interview and decide if they liked his answer or not. Uh, I, I think he said I wouldn't... Um, I think he, he gave a couple different answers. At one point he said, well, yes, I would make it more strenuous or more serious and from a regulatory standpoint. And then I think he walked that back. I don't want to put someone in charge of our government who, who, comes, who gets in the way between you and your own medical choices, you and your doctors. Now, unfortunately, that is what we got from the previous administration. Maybe that's what we get from him, too. And so I, I would want more clarity on that. But, I, you know, I think it should be people's choice. Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, and, you know, as you said earlier, I don't think it was unfair of Trump to highlight RFK's, you know, more progressive background, yeah. right? You know, I don't fully understand why he has become so popular among conservatives because he has so many obviously very left wing views, especially on things like environmentalism. Um, like, you know, I think he said something He's about how he thought corporations, <laughs> right, you know, and he thought corporations, you know, deserve the death penalty or something, called yeah. them, uh, I, I, He called I don't the NRA hear. a, uh, a terrorist group. Right, and I think it was, he said the Koch brothers were traitors, something like that, yeah. um, which is not exactly what you would expect from, you know, a strident conservative. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Um, it's just, uh, it, it's selective to me. Who gets the, you're crazy, you're that shit insane if you could possibly like this person. And, you know, as libertarians, like, well, sometimes crazy things end up not entirely correct. They end up a little bit correct. Or maybe sometimes they're totally crazy. But the mainstream media just has this demonize anyone who could like someone who disagrees with what the most establishment liberal perspective could possibly be. Even with, like with lab leak theory, they ended up demonizing people and then they look foolish because now even the energy department thinks that's the more likely theory for how COVID originates. No, I, I totally agree with that. I, yeah. I think that uh, late night comedy would probably be a lot funnier if they were willing to take more shots uh, across the political spectrum, because all politicians yeah. are were, should be made fun of as much as possible. Well, on the comedy front, um, who was it? Jerry Seinfeld said yesterday that it's wokeness stopping comedy from thriving, which, like, I think is getting to be a little bit of an outdated yeah. take. The I mean, think peak wokeness, peak cancel culture, I mean, you write about this stuff, too. It's yeah. receded a little bit, right? Yeah. There's still, like, the woke scolds calling for you to lose your job if you, you know, say something that they think is offensive. It just doesn't work as much. Right. Anymore. I mean, a good example, say, like, with the, uh, this is a couple of years ago, but the, all of the horror over Dave Chappelle's Netflix special. The thing is, he kept it, right? Like, he didn't lose his job. He's still one of the most famous, beloved comedians in America. And I think that if that had happened maybe two or three years prior, something would have actually happened other than a couple Netflix employees walking out in anger. Yeah, peak wokeness, um, July 31st, 2019. I think that's when it was. I, I just picked that date at random. But that's about where it feels to me like the, the, top, the top of the iceberg was. Well, I guess, uh, don't, don't get too ahead of yourself. Who knows? Who knows what, what horrors lie before us? I, I hope not. <laughs> well, well, we'll stay tuned for more horrors, potentially. <laughs>